What is up everybody? My name is Jim Games and I react to videos on the internet and in today's video I'll be reacting to North Korea. Uh, even saying the name North Korea, man, it, it kind of it puts shivers down my spine, you know? I mean, and I'm sure it does for you as well because, I mean, North Korea is a very tense area of the world. They're kind of closed off and they're in their own little bubble up there and um, they get some crazy leaders and their people seem to be kind of enslaved. Now, this is just basically what I know about North Korea from South Park and funny movies and a couple news stories here or there. Uh, but from my understanding is, yeah, the people are like kind of enslaved by this dictatorship and uh, they pretend to love their leaders to the point like when one of them dies, they're all like hysterically crying in the streets. It's kind of crazy to see. Like it's obviously fake. Like nobody, nobody would care, <laughs> you know, uh, especially somebody that's starving you. Uh, but yeah, so North Korea, obviously there's some uh, controversy here. You know, they're closed off to the rest of the world and, and they're in their own little bubble. And the thing is, with, with these reactions that I normally do, whether it be Russia, Germany, anywhere, anywhere I, I do a reaction to with these Geography Now reactions, um, I rely on people that are from that country or that general area to respond to me and give me insights and information about their culture, their art, anything, really. And uh, for the most part, people do. You know, they, they respond to the comments, and it's awesome. I get to kind of understand the people of that area that I'm reacting to. However, with this video, they're not going to see it because North Korea has their own internet. That's right, yeah. They got their own internet. They got, like, their own variation of, like, YouTube and, and all this stuff, and it's just closed off from everybody else in the world. Like I said, they're in this bubble. However, from today's video, I'm hoping to learn more about the art of North Korea, the people of North Korea, the geography, the landscapes, uh, some of the buildings, and some of uh, the incredible architecture I've seen from other places all around the world. So I'm hoping to learn more about that today. If you're new around here, please consider liking and subscribing because I do this sort of thing all the time. I'd love to have you here. All right, without further ado, let's not switch screens and let's get right on into it. I'm going to hit that button. Beautiful. Oh, hey, uh, real quick, right before I start, a couple of really important links down below I got to tell you about. My community Discord, if you'd like to connect, connect directly with me, Discord is the best way to do it. That's the very first link right there. Uh, we got a group of some awesome people in that server, so consider joining that. And then I also have my Twitch link down there if you want to catch out a live reaction show. But here we go. Let's do it. Let's learn about it. Korea, let's go. Oh, I got to make sure this is back. I started a couple seconds. There we go. There we go. Here we go. What's the biggest difference between North and South Korea? Well, for one, I'd say watch their news broadcasts and take note on how they talk about their leaders. As opposed to... Yeah, that and I think they have like this thing going on with conflict and something about a war, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. We have reached our next set of twin countries. The first was the Congos, the last will be the Sudans, but for now, we have reached the Koreas. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you may have heard something about North Korea in the past decade, as it's been in the news quite a bit. As you know, I'm half Korean with roots in South Korea, and not only that, but I'm also American, so basically, I'm the worst possible candidate in the eyes of a North Korean to speak about their country. I will try to remain as unbiased and neutral in my delivery, addressing as much information as objectively as possible based off of pure data and facts. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Dude, I really need to work on my Korean. I'm an embarrassment. Anyway, North Korea is sometimes referred to as the Hermit Kingdom, so there's always like a sense of mystery when it comes to what's inside. Fortunately, we have satellites and Google Earth. First of all, North Korea is located on the Korean Peninsula, connected to China's Liaoning and Jilin provinces, sandwiched between the Korea Bay and this sea, which be careful what you call it. Koreans and Chinese prefer the name East Sea, whereas the Japanese call it the Sea of Japan. Keep in mind, there's also an incredibly short 17 kilometer long border with Russia at the tri-point with China. Along the border with Russia lies the friendship bridge and only North Koreans and Russians are allowed to take it. With a transfer friendship in Vladivostok, bridge. this means you could essentially go all the way to Moscow, making it one of the longest train itineraries in the world at around nine days Ooh, upon arrival. The same deal that. exists with China in which there are three main I mean, it might be kind of fun. The Sino-Korean friendship bridge, the Jian Yalu River. Another Rail. friendship bridge. Uh, a nine day train ride. I don't know. I mean, that might be pretty cool. Might be kind of a... Actually, yeah, you know what? I would do that. I would take that train ride. You know? Just kind of like take in the beauty and everything. I'd do that. Just have like the vacation on the train the entire time. 
Railway and the new Yalu River Bridge. Each of these bridges, though, are guarded and only let in certain government-approved arrivals that have no set schedule. The country is divided into three types of administrative divisions, the nine provinces, the Tukbyoshi, or special city of Ranson, as well as the capital Pyongyang, which also acts in its own entity. Pyongyang has the only international airport, Pyongyang Sunan International Airport, whereas the second largest city, Hamhung, and the third largest, Chongjin, both on the east coast, also have respectively the next largest domestic airports. Now we reach the most controversial part, the border with South Korea, literally like their own brothers. This 250 kilometer long border, known as the DMZ or Demilitarized Zone, also sometimes called the 38th Parallel, this line was established by the Korean Armistice Agreement to serve as a buffer zone between the two nations, giving more than a little half of the peninsula to North Korea. This means that essentially both countries claim that they are the rightful owners of the entire peninsula, or at least their government ruling systems should be the dominant ruling ideologies. At Panmunjom lies the Joint Security Area, which acts as like the only connection between North and South Korea, with neutral conference rooms. It's yeah, you've seen these before, uh, or maybe you haven't, but uh, I've seen it a couple times here. These blue buildings, it's kind of like a mediator zone where, uh, you know, government officials from both North and South Korea, or, or actually anywhere, can kind of come together and kind of meet and discuss things. They got these conference tables in there. Uh, I've seen plenty of pictures of it. Uh, just recently, our past president was hanging out with, the, I don't know, Kim Jong-un or something in these blue buildings. Uh, it, was, it was pretty cool to see. I don't know why they're blue or what the deal is, um, but it's, um, it's, it's weird that there's this line. You know, and it, it, it's so intense. It's just weird to think that there's millions of people living like this right now, somewhere else in the other part of the world, you know? Uh, but these these blue buildings are completely iconic. I mean, I've seen them in movies. Um, most of what I know from North Korea literally comes from, like, funny movies from, like, Seth Rogen in South Park. So hopefully we learn a little bit more. Here we go. It's actually kind of like a tourist spot in which people are allowed to go in oh, under no the supervision way. of a military guard. On I top of that, that, it's estimated that the country has about 8,000 to 15,000 hidden underground facilities, including underground factories, underground air force hangars that cut through mountains, naval... Oh, this is the thing, man. This is the thing with North Korea. It's like, you don't know what they're going to do, you know? They're your crazy drunk uncle, and it's, uh, and it's 8.30 on Thanksgiving. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what they're going to do. And if they've got 8,000 to 15,000 underneath, under the ground bunkers that we don't know about, that we can't see through Google images and satellite and whatnot, like, who knows what the hell they're doing? Because what we're seeing them do right out in the open, testing nuclear military weapons and, and doing all kinds of crazy stuff, like, it, it's, it's mind boggling. So who knows what they're doing underground? But uh, that kind of scares me ports and artillery pieces in caves. North Korea, as we will soon find out, has quite a unique layout based heavily off of politics. Here you will find symbolism and imagery that relates to the government everywhere, even in the middle of remote farm villages. Every school and office building is required to have portraits of the late Kim Jong-il and Kim Il-sung on their walls. In Pyongyang, when they're not- Come on. <laughs> Come on. Can you, can you imagine that? Can you imagine like whatever country you're from? I mean, if they had to have a picture of some guy that used to rule or the current leader, like a picture of them in every little room. Like it just seems so self-absorbed to me. Like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's just gross. That I mean, there's a lot of gross things with this country, but like that's like one of them. It's like, really? Okay not driving, they usually take the amazingly embellished underground metro system, which goes as far as 110 meters below the surface. Oh, Most wow. foreigners that visit rarely get to see anything outside of Pyongyang. If you score a deal with the government, you might be allowed to visit Chongjin or the beaches of Wansan or the industrial city of Hamhung. Oh, and keep in mind, since 2015, they've actually started using their own time zone, UTC plus 830, which makes them 30 minutes behind South Korea and Japan. Why, why did they do that? Uh, because North Korea, that's why. Okay. Otherwise, is the part where I, I usually forgot. mention places of interest and honestly, out of my research, Almost all of them were located in Pyongyang, such as the Korean People's Study House, the Whoa. Ark of Triumph, Juche Tower, Cholima Statue, the Victoria's Fatherland War Museum, Manyongde Funfair Amusement Park, Kumsusan Memorial Palace, Kyonggijang Stadium. The Whoa, look at the size of this stadium. This might be the biggest stadium I've ever seen. That looks absolutely massive. And you can tell here too, like right over here, this is the goal and how tiny that soccer goal or football <laughs> goal is depending on where in the world you are uh is you know this is pretty dang massive yeah i don't know if i've ever seen a stadium that big that's that's impressive the largest in the world the tall well there it is it's the largest in the world <laughs> i guess i have not we've witnessed it now building Lugyong Hotel, the ideals of North Korean Workers' Party Monument. Otherwise, outside of Pyongyang and Nyohyangsan, you have the Friendship Exhibition Hall. In general, North Korea is quite different from- The buildings all look kind of like very gray. Like there's obviously some like interesting architecture going on there uh, and like some like 
Asian style architect. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, just like that slanty roof looking thing. Uh, but everything looks very gray. It looks like everything's made of concrete there. And maybe this, you know, as far as like, you know, it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like all their buildings and like, and yeah, buildings and, and, and sidewalks and, and everything you see. It reminds me of like one giant parking garage. Most places you'll encounter due to the regime honoring architecture and monuments. Aside from all that, though, the actual landscape has a few colorful sights to offer, which brings us to. All right. Now, believe it or not, if you ever get the chance to see the landscape of rural North Korea, it will not disappoint you. So, yeah. Now, now, okay. So, now this is what I'm talking about. This is some natural beauty. This is what I was kind of looking forward in this video. We've all seen the images of what North Korea is, that, you know, concrete jungle kind of looking thing uh, of, of their cities and whatnot. But this is a side of North Korea that you really, you just don't see very often. And look at it. I mean, it's, we know it's a mountainous region. We know, you know, it's fairly lush and green. Uh, I mean, this, it looks absolutely beautiful, honestly. Like, it looks like a place that I would love to visit. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever have the chance to visit. I don't think any of us will, honestly. You. First of all, North Korea is about 80% mountainous, with the largest ranges yeah. in the northeast being the Hamgyong and Namnim mountain chains. Now, when the two Koreas split up, the north side got the most treasured natural landmark, the highest peak on the entire Korean peninsula, Mount Pekdu. Well, part of it. China kind of got three quarters of it. Mount Pekdu, with its caldera lake, known as Heaven Lake, is actually an active volcano with the last eruption happening in 1903, and it's considered a sacred spot to all Koreans. Looks so the massive. west of Pekdu is the longest river that divides the border with China, the Amnok, or Yalu River, which empties into the Bay of Korea. Nonetheless, the Taedong River is probably the most important one as it flows directly through Pyongyang. About 70% of the country is forested, about 20% is arable for farming, which employs about a quarter of the entire population. Virtually every single crop field is under government jurisdiction as farmers must hand over a portion or quarter to the state. During the 90s, right. widespread flooding disasters caused famine, which killed off hundreds of thousands of people. Mm. And since then, North Korea has actually decided to quadruple their potato production in many places, replacing rice since potatoes grow much faster and easier. Speaking of which, I would argue that if you really want a taste of deep, true, non-commercialized traditional Korean cuisine, then the North Koreans probably have it a little bit more locked down better than South Korea. I'm sorry, South Korea, but it's kind of true. I mean, come on. Since when the hell was cheese ramyun a thing? And even though, admittedly, they do taste kind of good, kimchi was never originally intended to be made into a burger patty. Anyway, a traditional Korean meal will usually consist of multiple banchan, which are small seasoned side dishes placed in small dishes and bowls alongside your main plate. Typical dishes I'm sure many of you have already heard of, like bulgogi, kalbi, samgyeopsal, buchinge, bibimbap, are made in restaurants. No, I've never heard of any of those. <laughs> I guess I gotta start going to Korean restaurants. Uh, have I ever been to one? No, I've, I've never been to a Korean restaurant. Okay. I guess I gotta try. Sometimes in the homes of the elite. However, most people in North Korea don't actually eat meat that much, except on public holidays or on special occasions due to the lack of access. North Koreans are also oh. known for having the best version of my favorite food in the world, nengmyeon, ice cold starchy buckwheat noodles typically served with a half boiled egg, thin slices of brisket, cucumber radishes topped off with the right amount of vinegar and Korean spicy mustard. If I could go to North Korea just to try their nengmyeon, I would. Watch, I'm at customs at the airport and they're like, purpose of visit? Nengmyeon. Yeah, it's probably not gonna happen. Yo, Dennis Rodman, I need you to do me a favor. Almost all oil and petroleum is imported from China from a pipeline originating in Dadong along the border. And I think that's a good transition to start discussing the people and how and why they are the way they are. Right. And that will be discussed too. Yeah, they don't like us, the Now, Americans. let's be honest. When you hear North Korea, immediately images of the Kim regime and marching soldiers, military personnel. But for a couple minutes, try as hard as you can to put that aside and go deeper to a level that most people in the Western world don't really tap into. What is North Korea like outside of the news? Well, first of all, the country has about 25 million people and has the most active troops per population at nearly 48 per oh, thousand wow. people. With the exception of a very small group of Chinese, Japanese, and Westerners that have residency status, the country is almost completely homogenous at 99.99% ethnically Korean. That was the easiest pie chart I've ever made. In addition, they also use North Korean one as their currency, even though foreigners can't use it. They use a type C plug outlet and they drive on the right side of the road. Let's quickly talk about the few non-North Koreans that are allowed to live in North Korea. The only real group of ethnic minorities- Look at this hat. <laughs> Look at that hat. <laughs> that is like a, it's like a, a, a top hat, but it's like thinner. It seems widely out of place. I mean, this is a black and white photo. That is quite possibly the funniest hat I've ever seen in my life. And I kind of want one. It's like it's like the little hat piece you find in Monopoly. I like it. 
countries that have inhabited the peninsula prior to war times would be the Chegasun people, descendants of Manchurian lay monks from China that got married and settled in the area. Otherwise, modern Chinese people known as Hua Chao have been able to establish residencies in North Korea. However, since the 80s, more have repatriated back to China. Otherwise, a very small community of only a couple hundred Indians, Japanese, and yes, even about 200 Americans live in North Korea. No some way. of them are prisoners of war, some are defectors, but most of these people are serving in humanitarian sectors, providing things like medical and educational aid. The country has oh. virtually no standardized immigration policy other than, will the president allow you in? Which is how these two people got in. Remember the Equatorial Guinea episode? We talked about the dictator Francisco Macias? Well, he made a deal with Kim Il-sung and sent his kids to North Korea shortly before he was assassinated. Yeah, his daughter Monique was raised alongside the regime, personally meeting Kim multiple times. She speaks fluent Korean and is alive today. She wrote a book and does speaking tours. Then you have this guy who goes by his Korean name, Cho Sun Il. He's the only Westerner to officially work for the regime. It took him over 10 years to gain the confidence of the government. He is head of the Korean Friendship Association and is North Korea's unofficial ambassador to the world. What's even more interesting are the North Koreans living abroad. Today, there's a community of North Korean descended people in Japan known as the Zainichi Koreans. They have their own pro Pyongyang operated schools and teach lessons in Korean with a strong pro North Korean curriculum in Japan. Weird, huh? Also, there's that estimated to be a little more than 20,000 defectors living in South Korea. And there are quite a few living in the US as well. Remember that letter I got on Flag Friday? In North Korea, they speak, of course, Korean, but a distinct North Korean dialect, which is actually more kind of like a proper traditional way of speaking. Whereas the Korean spoken in South Korea utilizes a plethora of loan words from English and to some extent Chinese. For example, in South Korea, juice is juice. In North Korea, which translates to something like fruit sweet water. In South Korea, ice cream. In North Korea, orom kwaja, which means something like ice sweet tree. It's kind of like how Icelandic and Faroese are closer to ancient Norse than Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian. Now, being a North Korean in North Korea is very different from being a citizen of most other places on Earth. First thing you have to know is juche. This word describes the ideology of North Korea started by its founder, Kim Il-sung. Juche translates to something along the lines of self-reliance. What's interesting is that North Korea even goes by the juche year, not the Gregorian calendar. Calendar. All the years start on Kim Il-sung's birthday, April 15th, 1912, making 2018 the year 106 for them. All resources follow the Sungun Chongji policy, which gives ration priority to the military. They have the largest military budget per GDP. Okay, all right. So, well, first, that's just ridiculous. So, all right. So, that's the reason why they have, you know, such a, lo a large military presence, uh, or a good percentage of them. They said, like, 49% of, like, a 1,000 people. I forget what the number exactly was, but it was a, a very large percent of people involved in the military. Um, now, I think it's... It's it's not mandatory to join this military. I think if you you, you can do it at will or whatever. Uh, but I, what they were just saying was you, you get more food, you get more you know like stuff from the government if you join the military. That's probably why they have such a high number. Um, and then they just said what twenty three percent of the GDP uh, goes towards the military. So that's a huge military budget. And I've seen some crazy pictures of North Korea and Kim Jong Un's like yachts and like multiple mansions and and and, and all of his toys and stuff. Like there's there's a mass amount of money here. Uh, what do they say? Like twenty five million people? Yeah, there's twenty five million people in there. Twenty three percent of the GDP is going towards the military. These are all the things that, <laughs> that scare me and should scare you because North Korea is our drunk uncle. So. <laughs> They can do anything. They can do anything. P in the world at nearly 23%. Both Yikes. men and women are required to serve conscription. And okay, all right. So they are required to serve a little bit. They probably have like a small amount of time that they do, but they probably stick in the military to, to get more food and whatnot. Um, wow. 1.2 million active. This makes North Korea the country with the fourth largest military no after way. China, the U.S., and India. An element Dude, so they are the fourth largest military in the world. I had no idea. You know, I... I Obviously, North Korea freaks me out, as they probably freak a lot of people out. They're, they can do anything. <laughs> but I didn't realize that they were basically essentially the fourth largest superpower. You know, with that many people enlisted and that much money going into the military. And then that crazy leader. Oh, man. It's just, it's just a recipe for disaster. And they're so closed off. And they're such in their, like, little bubble there. But, I mean, that's their motto. That's what he was just saying. Their whole thing, like, what they go on is self-reliance. And that's kind of what they are. I mean, they're in their own little area. They're blocked off. Everything else, nothing can come in. Nothing can go out. And it's just pure self-reliance. I mean, they got to do some kind of trading, though. Entry school, children are taught almost immediately that the enemy is the West, and specifically the USA. Yeah. One of their favorite cartoons being Squirrel and Hedgehog. Anthropomorphic depictions of North Koreans versus the Japanese weasels, South Korean mice, and the American wolves. And don't forget good old Russia bear that the squirrels used to depend on for help as an ally, but he got too drunk and so they dropped him. Now I'm pretty sure you're all aware of how- <laughs> Love it. Love it. Love old cartoons. That's hilarious. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. American wolves? Hell yeah. 
what was it Japanese were weasels, were wolves, uh, and the drunken Russian bear. <laughs> Hilarious. How much restriction there is in North Korea on everyday commodities that we in the West are accustomed to, like YouTube. A list of things restricted in North Korea include overly provocative clothing, any website outside of North Korea's Kwangmyung. That's the thing, yeah. So, this is what I'm getting at, guys. Like, nobody from North Korea is ever going to see this video unless they've defected to a different country. And if that's the case, trust me, I want to hear from you. Please message me down below. I've got some questions. Um, but, yeah, no, it, they get their own internet. They get their own, like... Like I think they have their own like cell phones. They have their their own everything, cable networks and everything. They're they're truly in their own bubble. I cannot stress that enough. Internet service, movies and music from yep. the outside, Coca Cola, anything related to or being LGBT, oh, international I didn't know that. travel unless you are a high ranked official with permission from the government, domestic travel between cities unless you have a permit, magazines, hair dye or a haircut that does not fit one of the twenty eight approved styles. For they can't they can't dye their hair. I can't. I didn't know that. I heard about this. They got 28 styles. All right. So everyone's got 28 styles and you stick to those styles. And if you don't do it, then you're screwed. I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> you know, my options are limited with my thinning hair. Uh, but I mean, whatever. I think it's kind of cool. I mean, that's essentially what dudes have. You know, when we go to the barber, it's like you get that number, you get that short, and that's it. So, and I think there's only seven numbers. So, dudes really only have like seven haircuts. So, having 28 haircuts, I feel like it's I think, I think it's a nice it's a nice balance for men and women. Any kind of religious literature. They oh. did just legalize certain cell phones, though. Progress. Speaking of which, North Korea is essentially an enforced atheistic state, although some would argue that it's more like a person reverence state. Although the constitution says it allows religious freedom, religion is heavily restricted and chastised. Anyone owning a piece of religious literature, proselytizing, or worshipping anywhere outside of the government sanctioned and heavily monitored churches will be punished severely. Numbers are hard to come by since the Christian community is heavily concealed and underground, but studies show that there could be anywhere between 300,000 to half a million Christians residing in North Korea to this day. North Korea is a very elitist run country. The top and most privileged Village people live in Pyongyang. Most people that live in the city are expected to excel in all fields of academia and the arts. Most people there play at least one instrument and have some kind of skill that can attribute to the furtherance of North Korea's cultural. Interesting. So the most people in the top 1% that live in these cities that are required to, you know, contribute to art and, and, and academia and to, to the development of their nation. Awesome. That's great. Uh, but the thing that's, it sucks about all this is we're not going to see it. The rest of the world's not going to see it. Now, this, these people, they're required to pretty much learn at least one instrument. Can you imagine the music that's coming out of this area? Can you imagine the talent, all that stuff, that the rest of the world is just missing out on? Because we're all closed off and we can't be in there. And think about everything else that's happened in the world. All the rest of the movies, the music, the arts, and everything like that, that they're closed off to, that they're never going to see. You know, it's, it's a sad situation all around. It's for us and for them because not having them and not having that talent that I'm sure they have over there being shared with everybody else in the world, it's our loss. And then everything else that they haven't seen is also a huge loss to them because I'm sure there's mass amounts of art, music, movies, everything, pop culture, everything that they're just not allowed to be exposed to. Even religion, that was really surprising identity and if the government feels like it they will hold the Arirang mass games the largest of its kind according to the Guinness Book of World Records mm -hmm. here students as young as five from one of the top eight elite schools of Pyongyang participate in an extravagant colorful performance of exquisitely choreographed acrobatics arts that. dance and music with an amazing card mosaic wall literally controlled by individual students flipping colored panels creating a massive moving image ah. it's like a living TV and each pixel is a person That's okay cool. history That's time cool. if we really want to go back and discuss the entire history of the Korean Peninsula it kind of goes like this Jelmun and Mumun pottery period, Korean Neolithic period, Korean Bronze Age, Korean Iron Age, First Kingdom of Gojoseon was founded along with the Jin State, the Proto Three Kingdoms period, the actual Three Kingdoms period of Goguryeo, Baekje and Shila, Shila and Balhae split up, the latter Three Kingdoms, United Dynastic period of Goryeo, Joseon and Korean Empire, World War II Japanese occupation, there's a weird provisional government thing hosted in China, and then this is where things get complicated. Basically, Russia and China supported the North and the US and the UN with its allies for the South. The Korean War, or as the North Korean call it the victorious fatherland liberation war was essentially a war caused by political ideology basically there are arguments on who exactly shot the first fire but what we do know is that on sunday june 25th 1950 north korea's korean people's army crossed the 38th parallel behind artillery fire and in three months pushed south korean and american forces all the way down to pusan then the u.s and u.n forces retaliated they pushed the north koreans all the way back up with a vicious counterattack. finally there's a stalemate and armistice in 1954 and the dmz was set up officially separating the two koreas today north korea is in an 
interesting situation. If you talk to a North Korean, they will tell you, yes, anyone disrespecting leaders will be punished. Which brings us to Kim Jong-un. I feel like we kind of have to do a flowchart like we did in the Columbia episode. Can we do that, Ken? Sure. It all started with this guy, Kim Il-sung, father of North Korea. Kim Il-sung had six children from two wives. His oldest son, Kim Jong-il, took over after him when he passed away in 1994. The country wept. Kim Jong-il was known for being the man that essentially, against UN policies, made North Korea a nuclear state by supposedly developing nuclear warheads. He died in 2011. The country wept again. He had six children from three different women. The oldest son was supposed to inherit the nation, but apparently Kim Jong-nam was considered an embarrassment. <laughs> I wonder how he was an embarrassment. How is this Kim Jong Nam guy an embarrassment? You know what he he, he kind of looks like like one of my slacker friends. You know he looks like a dude that I'd hang out with or meet in my friend circle. I can just imagine this guy like downstairs in the basement playing video games, crushing beers, pounding Doritos, and then be like, "You got to do something in your life." He's like, "Nah, I'm cool down here." and he lived in exile. The next oldest son, Kim Jong-chul, was deemed as not fit for the job. So that left the youngest son, Kim Jong-un, to take over the throne. I wonder why, and then, uh, so so they're kind of handpicking people. It's not like a direct, like, king, you know, the, the firstborn prince, you know, it, it doesn't work like that. Um, it seems like there's some sort of selection here. Uh, the first guy definitely didn't make it. He's too much of a slacker. This Kim Jong-chul guy, uh, he's not fit to be uh, the leader, which is, which is interesting. I wonder what his deal is, too. I mean... So now they're going down to the third, the third oldest here, which is Kim Jong Un. Kim Yo Jung just missed the shot. Just missed the shot. Throne. Kim Jong Un was brought to power after his father's death, and in 2013, Kim Jong Un executed his aunt's husband under grounds of alleged corruption and treason. His half brother Kim Jong Nam was assassinated in Kuala Lumpur. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be awkward. <laughs> that's gonna be awkward. It's gonna be awkward in uh, in family functions, you know? Like, what do you do for your? I don't know if there's a North Korea Thanksgiving. <laughs> Or North Korean Christmas. Man, that sounds like a bad B movie. North Korean Christmas. Um, so, <laughs> it's got to be weird, though. She, so, he had her husband executed. His aunt's. His aunt's husband executed. Oh, shit. N now, look at this. Kim Jong-nam died. I gotta take us back. I missed that. Here's my buddy. Throne. Kim Jong-un was brought to power after his father's death, and in 2013, Kim Jong-un executed his aunt's husband Awkward. under grounds of alleged corruption and treason. His half-brother, Kim Jong-nam, was assassinated in Kuala Lumpur. Details are still a little shady Ooh. behind it. He then continued his father's work by doing a series of missile tests on Mount Mantop. So, yeah. That's a... Th uh, the, so, did he assassinate his own brother then? That's cold, man. That's cold. Oof, but I guess if you're willing to take out your aunt's husband, and I mean, but your own immediate brother? Yikes, dude. I don't know. I mean, was he just afraid that he might want power or something? That's the thing, man. That's the thing that's just crazy about all this. Is like, why the people don't just, like, fight back? Yeah, there's a lot of things going on in North Korean politics, and it only gets more interesting when we talk about their relationship to the outside world. Let's cover that now. I just don't understand how you can be so cold, even in your own family like that. North Korea is known for being one of the most isolated nations on Earth. However, they do actually have diplomatic missions with outside states. First of all, North Korea has made kind of interesting business ties with various African nations. They are known for being the creators of various statues like the ones in Zimbabwe, Namibia, Mozambique, even hmm. Senegal's resistant monument, the largest statue in Africa. Generally, they seem to have ties with Whoa. nations that also have ties to huge. communism or are still under communist governments. In the past, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam were pretty close allies. However, in the past, these states have adopted a more capitalistic substructure in their legislations, which has distanced them from North Korea over the years. You would think that the USA and UK would have bad ties, but surprisingly, the UK has an embassy in North Korea. North Korea actually does have third-party agreements under the table that allows private investors to do business with them. Whenever North Korea says Sketchy. they're closing off to the Americans, Sketchy. there's always kind of like a small loophole that they kind of let slide, and by that, I mean Dennis Rodman. North Korea might say that their best friends would kind of technically be China and Russia. However, China and Russia are a little weary of hanging out with them. Both countries are their largest suppliers of import and export as well as outside communication even though that is very restricted as well when it comes to south korea though the north has kind of like a strange i love you but i hate everything you stand for type of a relationship these two are basically identical twins separated at birth raised by incredibly different foster parents north koreans kind of view south koreans as american puppets that condone western imperialist ideologies basically the narrative for the north koreans is withdraw your ties and sanctions to the americans and we can reunify whereas the south is like get rid of kim jong-un and join our system and then we can unify in conclusion yes north korea has 
quite a reputation around the world for being a mysterious, isolated nation of enigma brimming with controversy and conflict, but they also have a unique story that tells us how ideology can play one of, if not one of the most important roles on how we people will live on the planet. I don't know what the future will hold for North Korea and South Korea, but let's hope that somehow, some way, peace can be the final result. Stay tuned, twin number two, South Korea is coming up next, and my mom will be in it. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so yeah, South Korea is going to be the next one for me. The reason I'm doing North Korea right now, guys, is because I, I actually wanted to do uh, South Korea because I'm doing this uh, this whole K-pop journey. I'm just learning more about it and the music side of things. And uh, it, it has a lot to do with just the culture and how they like they, they put numbers together and put you know give everything a, a value. Uh, but that's a different conversation for a different co time next week for that reaction. Uh, but North Korea, I mean, I, I knew kind of going into this one, kind of what to expect a little bit, because I don't live under a rock, you know, I'm very familiar with some of North Korea's practices, uh, and recently, in the main, in the, in the the recent years, I've been hearing a lot about, you know, the, the poor people of North Korea being starved, and their food has to be rationed, um, and, and it, that a lot of people join the military because they get extra food and things like that, even though they're paid very, very little, um, it looks like they have like a, like fake stores. Like this was in that movie, uh, The Dictator. I think it was no, not The Dictator. Uh, it was a different movie. It was a Seth Rogen movie. I forget the name of it. Uh, but uh, like they have like fake storefronts with like food. It looks like there's like a like grocery store there, but it's like all cardboard cutouts and stuff, like to give the illusion that they're a healthy nation. I don't think that they are though. I don't think that they are. I think there's just like one guy kind of running everything, Kim Jong Un. You know, and there's always gonna be that one guy. This is the problem with having one guy do everything. And, you know, he's just shitty to his people. And on top of that, he, he's even wor he's even worse to his own family. Like, even, like, one guy was just accused of doing something for tr or of treason, and he had him executed. That was his aunt's husband. Like, that's going to be awkward at family functions. And then his brother mysteriously was assassinated. I mean, he was, like, kind of like the slacker one that seemed like he didn't want anything to do with power. But still, maybe Kim Jong-un got, like, scared that maybe one day he'd try and, and take the throne or whatever. It's just... It's just bad all around, you know? It's just bad all around. You feel bad for the people of North Korea. And and uh, I also feel bad for us in a way, though. Everybody else in the rest of the world. Because being so closed off and in this bubble, that means you're not going to be able to share your thoughts, your ideas, your artistic side, anything. Any of that stuff. All that stuff is just not spreading out into the world, into the collective consciousness of humanity, and becoming something else. No, you're your own little thing. Now, I get it. Self-reliance, that's kind of the motto. That's what they rely on. You know, that's, that's, and I get that. That's cool. It's good to be self-reliant. It's good to be able to you know, feed your own people and, and have your own economy and things like that and not rely too much on other uh, nations. And it seems like they're kind of doing that to a degree. But even their farming, uh, they said, only, pay, or only took care of like 20% of the food uh, coming from that area. So they are getting imports and they are exporting things as well. It's just a problem. Who's the middle guy handling that stuff and distributing all of these goods? Because there's a lot of sketchy stuff going on behind closed, uh, closed doors. And I, I can only imagine how much sketchy stuff is going on behind closed doors because of how secretive everything is. They don't have the same internet me and you have, you know? They're on a different thing over there. Man, it'd be kind of cool to be able to go on that internet. If anybody knows how I can get on North Korea's internet, let me know. I, there's going to be a way for me to do it. <laughs> I would love to do it. Just kind of like look around, see what like their internet's like, like what kind of websites they can go to. Um, they're against LGBT, so I, I guess it's maybe it's illegal to be gay over there or something, which is sad. You know, it's not it's not a choice. <laughs> you know, some people are just born gay, and can you imagine being born gay somewhere where you like you, you can't marry the person you love or even be seen with them? Like that's got to be hell. Uh, the things that surprised me, the, th the real things that surprised me was the upper class, uh, how they are all encouraged to contribute to academia uh, and then also uh, to the arts as well by learning at least one instrument, sometimes even multiple instruments. There's a tremendous amount of music out there that we're just never going to hear because they're in their closed bubble. And that's sad for us. And on top of that, there's a tremendous amount of music that all these musicians over there are never going to hear either because it doesn't fit in with their propaganda. Bummer, especially some American music, because they hate us. And it, it's, it sucks. It's, it sucks all around, you know? Um, hopefully one day things just open back up, you know, where, like, something happens where the people wake up and, like, you know what? There's something going on. There's got to be a way, like, their internet can get hacked or something, where, like, the rest of the internet gets in. <laughs> they let it, I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works. But there's got to be a way. Somebody's got to do that. Uh, because it, because. It, all these artists and, and everything, they can't be inspired by this other art if they're only in this same uh, ecosystem of the same ideas going back and forth. 
it's, it's, it's a bummer for everybody. But that was surprising to me. Uh, some of like the natural areas, the mountainous regions and things like that, it looked absolutely beautiful. I'd love to go hiking there. But I kind of don't want to because I also don't want to get killed. So I, pr- I probably won't do that then. I won't go. I definitely won't go hiking in North Korea. But I want to. But I won't because life. Uh, what else was cool about this? The military thing was kind of surprising. Uh, the budgets in the military thing was surprising. Uh, the underneath the, the bunkers underneath the earth, the underground bases and whatnot, 8,000 to 15,000 of them. That's a lot, especially when you start talking about the sheer amount of numbers of people involved in the armed forces, the money. It's crazy. And then you've got a guy in charge of this whole thing or several generations of guys in charge of this whole thing that are very, very military minded. So, like, these are their toys and boys like their toys. And uh, they got nukes, guys. <laughs> they got nukes. And they got nukes that can reach California. So that's kind of crazy. Um, it's just a sad situation all around. Uh, but I feel like there's only so much. I, I, don't, I don't know how much longer North Korea can last like this. Do you know what I mean? Like it's only a matter of time before like it, something gets seeped in. Or like the, uh, there's a mass awakening to people where they realize, hey, there's a, a much better way to live that are just going on in the rest of the world, uh, that there's, you know, freedoms that you deserve, um, that there's there's persecution that you are enduring that you do not need to. Uh, they just need to get those ideas in there somehow. I was watching a documentary one time, and there was these people in South Korea, and they had these uh, these giant, like, weather balloon things, and they basically, like, put, like, promotional materials or, like, pamphlets of stuff of, like, saying, like, hey, you know, you guys are – you're being mind-controlled. You guys are – you know, you're, you're, you're actually slaves right now. Like, read this. And they were floating up over South Korea, and they just landed in North Korea, and it was pissing North Korea off. Pretty funny. <laughs> but – um. This guy, eventually what's going to happen is the mass is going to realize, hey, this is really messed up and this is really weird and we're actually enslaved here. If I can't leave and nobody else can come in and I can't see what's going on in the rest of the world, I can only see what's going on right in front of my face, eventually people are going to be like, all right, I, I need to get out of here. You know, I need some kind of wanderlust. But uh, this, this is going to be a weird video because nobody in North Korea will ever see this video, at least for now. Maybe someday they will. But for now... Nobody's going to see it. So the people watching this video right now are going to be people, well, people that just follow my stuff. And then there's going to be people from, you know, regions in that area. So if you have ever been to North Korea, which I'm assuming you haven't, there's going to be a very, very small percentage of people that have been to North Korea that would be commenting on this video. Um, or you live around there, or if you're from South Korea and you know a little bit more about North Korea, or if there's any information you want to share with me and my viewers, I, I would truly appreciate it if you let us know in the comments. Uh, because I feel like it's, it's just a wild, it's just wild to think about that there's 25 million people living out there right now, living their lives, and they have no idea about me. They have no idea about <laughs> about anything that's going on except for what's right in front of their faces. And I really feel like this is going to implode one day, and they're eventually just going to be like, "Screw this, we're out," <laughs> and start over or something. It could be bad, it could be good. Who knows? Who knows what is on the horizon? But yeah, if you have any information for me, please post it down in the comments. But I think that's going to do it for me today. We learned a lot from this video. And I'm going to be back next week with South Korea. And we're going to learn more about uh, a little bit more about them. But if you enjoyed your time with me today, like and subscribe. And I'm going to catch you out later. Bye-bye.